And our next question, how do auto spawn units? So we saw that with the camels, um, but I want to do a different version of that where we're going to have player one is going to have, let's go to buildings. Player one is going to have something that can hold units. So a bombard tower, how about that? Uh, if you're wondering about these rings around it, it's a mod, uh, Age of Mandala. You can find it in the mods. Uh, so we're going to have a trigger called uh, Fill Tower. Uh, strength State is going to be on and Trigger is going to be looping. Continue to fill tower with penguins. If you guys might remember from a previous stream, I filled a tower with penguins. It makes for a very uh, interesting effect. And I know this terrain is a little bit off for penguins, but we're going to leave it for now. Um, so we can have a timer that lasts, yeah, 10, whatever 10 is. Right, so I think this is not 10 years. Um, I think it's just 10 ticks or seconds. I don't think it was even seconds. I think it's just like 10 ticks. Um, so yeah, we'll leave it at 10. And the effect is we're going to garrison, uh, what's it, create object, create garrisoned object. So we need to find penguins. Uh, P, paladin, no, penguin, yay. Um, source player one. And so we need to set either an object or an area so it's either going to even though this is garrisoned it can technically garrison into an area but we're just going to click select, set objects and it's going to go into the tower um we don't have to play with this any at all um or do we this is not it's not happy for some reason what am i missing um go to objects Wait, why do I have my penguin in here too? I'm not sure why there's two object list types. Whatever, timer setting. All right, let's save as, and we'll say answering oh, YouTube two test. And oh, there we go. So 10 seconds, maybe it was, oh, it's 10 in-game seconds. So not quite 10 seconds. Um, I'm going to speed this up and we're going to see what happens. It's fun, I promise. So triggers, timer, one, save, test. Oh, okay. It's I thought it Oh, I see. There's going to be another another thing we're going to have to add to this. So it filled up the the five slots it has in this bombard tower. Um if we were Teutons and this was post imp, maybe we'd be able to fill a bit more. No, what we need to do is ungarrison. So we need another trigger to ungarrison. Um The objects uh, might be unload. Let's see what else we can find in here. Yeah, I think it'll be unload, like as if we're unloading a transport ship. So we're gonna set the objects. It's going to unload, and we're going to. Set the location down here. And you know what? We're gonna make this uh, a little bit more habitable for the penguins. We're gonna add some snow. Just to make it seem like they're they're being spawned out of a, a zoo in the shape of a bombard tower and they're coming back down to uh, their home. That has a little bit of grass. Um, we'll say it's 
I don't know. Certain time of year, I still don't think there's much grass um, growing. There's there's possibilities. Climate change can have do things. I don't know if I finished making that trigger properly actually before I tested it. Oh, there they go. <laughs> If you want your new follow animation for Twitch, there you go. Cute little penguins running around everywhere. How many penguins does it take to crash my game? Alright, that's enough of that. What's the next question? I want to make my own campaign, but I'm struggling with some of the triggers, such as keeping enemy units immobile for a certain time. Uh, surely you can make a more complex video on editing. I think I cut it off what the message was, but yes, I can tell you. I think I did answer this guy on, on YouTube. Who was that? That was Matthew Cohen. So I did answer him um, in the comments on this one. But what you want to do, say we're going to make player uh, add a unit for player two. So player two is going to be wanting to move his boyar, but we're going to have to force it in place. So what we can do is, um, same trigger even, because it has the starting state and it's looping, that's the important features. Uh, the same trigger that we use to create spawn penguins out of the bombard tower, we're going to force this um, boyar to stay in place. And um, actually, there's going to be a timer, so there might be a little bit of delay, but it'll I think it'll help us see the effect a bit better. So what we're going to do is um, send the boyar back onto the starting tile that it's, it's at. Um, I think attack move is one way to do that, but I'm wondering if there's another... Um, I think task object is what I want. Uh, so source player two, and we don't really shouldn't need to change anything about the objects. Uh, oh, we already set the object. Cool. And we need to set the location he's going to go to. Uh, can we just do the tower underneath them? Yeah, looks so. So uh, let's also add um, visibility again. So if we go to units, other for player one, which is me in this case. Actually, let's try just doing it for Gaia. I'm going to map revealer. Oh, you can't do Gaia map revealer. Wait, oh yeah, you can, you just don't see it, uh, which is really annoying. Okay, so that should show it for all players, I think, which includes player one. Uh, let's save that and test it. Oh, no, it didn't work. Okay, let's restart again. So we'll go to units and we'll select player one for map revealer. There we go. And now, theoretically, we are revealing this boy R2 player one, which is ourselves. All right, bunch of clicks, that should be good. And we can test that. Um, no, what? Okay, so he seems to be stutter stopping, and I think that's because we just have the timer, and so after a second, he's forced back um, that direction. Let's um, Created as a new trigger without the timer. So, triggers, uh, we'll delete the task object here. 
Oops. And we'll create a new trigger. Um, hold fast, like his commander told him to do. Trigger looping, yes. And the new effect will be. Maybe I missed something, but um, set objects, that guy, and set location there. Um, yeah, I don't. I shouldn't need to change any of these. Unless I said source player wrong, but it should be player two. Um, yeah, task object. And uh, let's also just set visibility. Uh, was it change visibility or set visibility? Set player visibility, player one visible. Oh, uh, Gaia? I think that sets it to everything's visible, but maybe it's just like hawks and other animals. All right, that doesn't seem to be working. So maybe I need to do a different type of action instead of task object. Oh, I guess there's a stop object. That should work, right? We should just be able to set that and just continually stopping the object. And we do have the, yeah, trigger starting state on looping, yes. Um, and that visibility didn't work. So set player visibility to player two. So, or is this inversed? I think player two, player one. That's how I understand it. I guess we won't be able to tell if it just stays in our visible area. Okay, so yeah. Oh, Boyar. So Boyar seems to be getting stopped every second. Yeah, you can see that stuttering. So the stopped object kind of works, but it doesn't work very well because it's not tasking him back to the same area. Um, he's still able to move around. So let's keep trying <laughs> as the penguins go off to their homeland. Um, what other options do I have for you, bud? I thought task object was going to work perfectly, but apparently the AI just overrules the, the task object. We could try attack move, but I think that's going to be very similar. Let's see if he continues to attack that area. Oh, source player, player two. It's important. Okay, he's running to that point. Huh. Yeah, he gets stuck. He has to come back. Okay, so attack move worked. Um, he just can visit that little area. <laughs> All right, we did it. So we just need to set the trigger attack move. Let's rewatch that. So we have this boyar, and the trigger is hold fast. His military leader is telling him to to stay still, and we have attack move as the effect, and source player is player two. We set object as the boyar, and we set location whatever tile so we could have the tile right underneath him, I believe. Um, so if we test that, Boyar moves, and he comes right back to where he started. He really wants to get away from those penguins. I understand, man, they're honking a lot, but you're coming right back. Yeah, he can change his direction, his leaving direction a little bit, but he's just forced right back to uh, this tile, the corner of that tile. Cool. 
So that's how to keep units more or less still. What's the next question we have? Hi, how can you change the attack of a unit by means of a trigger? So I guess we'll use this boyar again. Um, because we'll be able to click him and see his attack as we move along. So um, we'll, we'll do a new trigger because we don't want it looping. Um, or do we want it looping? Yeah, we, we will. Um, we'll just continually increase his attack, I think. So change object attack. There we go. So set objects, boom, source is player two, and we're going to add. Uh, yeah, let's just add one. I don't know the armor attack, um, armor slash attack type for melee damage. Let's try one um, and see what happens. And let's give player one um, a few champions so I can send him in to this boyar that's kind of stuck here one at a time and we can see how quickly his attack improves and how quickly he can take out champions um, before he has to come back to his starting position. Um, let's double check the triggers before I move on. So we have uh, hold fast, change object attack, uh, go to objects. So it's this boyar. Uh, player two is the source player that's getting this trigger. So just because we selected that object doesn't mean it's going to apply that object for whatever reason. And we're going to add a quantity of one to the attack and the attack type is type one. And I'm assuming that's uh, melee armor, melee damage. That's what would seem reasonable to me, but I didn't look it up. So test it out. Penguins go off. Bulgarians finally getting the uh, champions they always dreamed of. So right now he has an attack of 12. And it seems to be staying there. So maybe I had the wrong um, damage type. Let me look up... Um, AoE2, uh, what is it called? Armor type numbers. So it can't handle more than 255. Oh, okay, that's what type does. Well, it's still not, it doesn't seem to be adding. Hmm. Because this person is... Oh, they're adding it to Chukanu. Um, and they ended up with 8 plus 775 because what it's doing is actually multiplying uh, the 256 or this number by that number. Or I think it's, what, 3 times 256 plus 15? Or 3, 3 plus 255 plus 16? Or plus 15? Um... I guess, yeah, I don't know why. Let's let's go back to zero. So I think this should add four damage every tick. Maybe what I had before was just too large. Um, yeah, there we go. So we see that armor increasing very quickly, or attack increasing very quickly. Let's see how quickly you can dispatch champions as they come at them one at a time.
And the Boyar just dispatches him with a one hit. But he's still taking some damage. And I was victorious as the Boyar went down. So yeah, um, that's how you increase attack. And we looked at um, the trigger and it has some weird coding. So that's why you kind of just need to look things up a lot of the time. Uh, so this is, when you add a one here, you're actually adding 255. When you add a two, you're actually adding two times 255. Uh, so I would say leave this at zero. And then um, unless you really want to jack up the attack damage of uh, whatever unit you have. And then you can multiply and divide as well. Um, but I don't, I guess you're multiplying the, the default 12 attack that the Boyer has or whatever unit you have. So yeah, that's how you add attack. And you can do the similar thing for um, civilization, HP, the name. I think that was actually one of the next questions. Uh, how do you rename units? So yeah, let's, uh, who asked that? Kai asked that. Uh, change object name. So we're going to set object, source players, player two again. And what new name uh, will we go? Well, the horse kind of looks like a snake fly to me. Um, and I understand that some of you might not know what snake flies look like. So let me bring up what a snake fly looks like. So you see the boyar's head, it's kind of like this bee, this beef, or the, not the boyar, the, the horse's head has like this protrusion that kind of reminds me of a snake fly that has this protruding head. Uh, not a true fly, I don't believe, but um, yeah. So we're just going to call him snake fly rider, explain why that name's that name. Um, and let's, uh, we don't want this repeating, do we? Yeah, so we're actually going to delete that and create a new uh, trigger that will only happen after 10 seconds. So we can see the original name and then see it changed. So 10 seconds, a new effect, and it will be change object name, player two, set object onto the boyar, which will now be called snake fly writer. Um, save that. So we have Boyer, Snakefly Rider. <laughs> there you go. And that's how you change an object's name. We could change the Civ as well. Um, you can change pretty much everything except for the player name, I think. I don't think you'd be able to change the player name. So I think that was the last question I had. No, we don't. No, we have the main question that everyone asked after that. Um, how do we make our own campaign? How do we use this custom map into multiplayer unranked? How do I upload it? It feels pointless making a map if I can't share it. All valid points. Um, what you do is you go and upload a mod to um, the AOE2 website. So submit a mod and then you have to have a, well, you add your title, your visibility, and you upload an image, and then you upload a zip file of the mod folder, and it has to be in a fairly specific um, order. And I'm not gonna demonstrate it right now, but I will demonstrate it for the YouTube video um, that will follow this. So hi, YouTube. 